Hey guys, this is Steve from SynthoTech.com and I'm going to be sharing with you today um, some skills to help your soldering go better and so you actually make sure that your kit works right and it's not uh, ruined by any kind of human error if possible. Um, one thing I want to start off with is you want to try to get uh, a soldering iron that is um, not hopefully the bottom of the barrel uh, soldering iron you may be found at a garage sale. Uh, you might be able to find a great something out of garage sale. I found a Weller garage sale recently. However, um, some of these just plug in. They're just too plug into the wall directly with no external uh, kind of temperature regulation um, will result in sometimes you not be able to get your solder hot enough. And th the criteria here is we want to be able to make sure that our solder uh, is is fully and evenly melted at the same time. So it needs to be a hot enough temperature where it's going to be able to do that. Plus it also needs to be not too hot where you're going to destroy your PCB or the pads or any of the VOs that are on there because um, that will damage your board. Um, one error that we see a lot is people probably not having enough um, enough heat coming out of their uh, soldering iron. Uh, we set ours between 750 degrees and 800 degrees and that allows us to move fairly fast enough where we can um, do, do a number of uh, components very quickly. This, if you leave it there too long, potentially could mangle a, a via or another connection on your board so, or trace, so you do got to be careful. Um, when applying heat to the component. Let's get a little closer here and see if we can take a look. Over actually. on this side, I'm going to be taking the tip of the soldering iron, putting it right up next to the lead from the diode, as well as the pad, and then apply my solder on the other side to the pad. Now, I want the pad and the lead itself to heat up and to be able to actually melt that solder, and not just the tip of the iron. Um, if you apply it to your iron and keep goobing it up, the, the, the solder will not melt evenly and you'll get big chunks and you'll keep adding solder and it'll look really gross. And one way you can tell that you've got really bad joints is if that is if the solder is has a real hazy and dull look. If it's nice and shiny, you'll know that you got a pretty good so The main things to take away from this video are number one, make sure that you have a soldering iron that goes up to 750 to 800 degrees. It's really going to make sure that you'll be able to melt your solder evenly and it will clump up on the board. Uh, also make sure you apply your solder directly to a pad or, or a combination of pad and lead um, or pin from your IFC and then apply the solder directly to those, not necessarily just to the tip of your iron. You don't want to melt your solder, you want the components um, to be able to melt them, not just the tip of your, of your iron. Um, also make sure that your surface is nice and shiny. If it's dull, you'll most likely have a cold solder, which of course can break off the board later or not ensure a good connection, which could lead to a lot of problems. If you're putting a lot of solder on there, you've probably done too much. Try to use as little as you possibly can. And um, I don't always wear ventilation, but it's a good idea too. And I protect you. Uh, thanks for watching. We're going to have more tips on how to solder.